Building on the previous program, as always, we're going to make our robot now go straight using the gyroscope. So we're going to send our robot down a path, and if it starts to veer, our gyroscope's going to know, and we'll adjust the power so that it corrects itself and goes straight again. This means that if another robot or something comes up and hits your robot, it'll fix itself and then keep going. This also means if your motors are not exactly the same speed, so let's say one motor has a little bit more resistance than the other one, your gyroscope makes sure that robot goes perfectly straight. We're going to do this proportionally. That means that as the robot gets more off track, it'll apply more power to the wheel that's behind and less power to the wheel that's ahead. So for every degree, it's going to add one power or one percent power uh, to this wheel and remove one from this wheel. It's going in the opposite direction. It's going to do the opposite thing. We can do this doing using just one equation uh, for each wheel, and that way it's a lot easier than setting up a whole bunch of ifs and elses and ifs and elses. So let's talk about how this is going to work. And it's going to be the same for Android Studio and for Arduino. Um, there's just going to be one little minor change uh, to the Android Studio program because the Android Studio uses uh, 0 to 1 for the power. But they're both pretty simple. Got my markers again. And we're going to have a couple of variables. We're going to have left power and we'll have right power. And both these powers, when they're positive, they're going to be going forwards. When they're negative, they're going to be going backwards. Both these are going to start out with a, a, a standard power. So that means when the robot's facing forwards, they're both going to be going with the same power. For both of these, we're going to have it be 0.25 or um, 0.3, 25% or 30%. And you can adjust that. You can make the robot go faster or slower to start with. Um, so we're going to make that a variable. So we're going to say, first of all, it's going to equal straight speed. And then from that, we're going to adjust it because remember, the one facing forward is it's going to be straight speed. And as it changes direction, then we're going to just slightly adjust that straight speed. We're going to adjust it by the distance between where the robot is facing and where we want the robot to face. So we're going to draw out our neat circle again. And we'll say that we want to face 0. Now let's say that we're actually facing, we'll say, we'll go over here and do four degrees. So we'll say that we're facing four degrees. So this is actually negative four degrees. We're going to figure out the distance by taking our absolute, so where we are facing, minus our target, which in this example is zero. And we're going to update our target to start with. So we're going to zero that out to start with. We'll do that in the program. Um, but for this example, our target is zero. So our absolute being 4, we'll say that we are facing 4 degrees, minus target is 4. Now we're going to adjust our left power and right power by 4. So we're going to take this and plus or minus 4, plus or minus 4. So plus or minus this guy. Now for robots facing over here, got a robot out to, to show, we need to adjust by turning more in this direction. To do that, we need to add power to our left motor and remove power from our right motor. Since this is a positive number, and we need to add power to our left motor, we're going to add to our left motor and subtract from our right motor. Now, by how much? Four? Well, no, not actually four. Uh, because it's going to change constantly. In this position, it's going to be 4. But at 3, it's going to be 3. At 2, it's going to be 2. At 1, it's going to be 1. At 0, it's going to be 0. So we'll just have straight speed. And remember, we got this by taking the absolute, or the z integrated, minus target. So up here, we're going to add absolute 
and we're going to subtract target. We're going to now subtract absolute minus target. Now with this one, this is fine, but with this one we actually need parentheses and to make it look nice we're going to have parentheses around both of those. So we're going to add 4 to our left and subtract 4 to our right. Now we could run this program just by taking these two variables and pumping them right into our motor powers. We set the motor powers for both of those. Um, but we could run into a small issue and that is that let's say that our heading becomes way over here. So let's say that's 135. So 135 minus our target which is 0 equals 135 and remember I said that we're using like 30 or 25 for our, our straight speed so that means that up here we let's say we're using 30 we'd have 30 plus 135 and 30 minus 135 30 plus 135 is 165 Oops, 165 and 30 minus 135 is negative 105. Neither of those are legitimate motor powers. We can't, you know, we're limited between negative 100 and 100 for our motor powers. So we can't feed it negative 105, we can't feed it 165. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip it off. If our motor power is greater than 100, we're going to convert it to, we're going to set it to be 100. If it's less than negative 100, we're going to change it to negative 100. That's it. That will make our robots drive straight, and if the robots get bumped around, they will go back to the direction you're facing initially, and then continue forwards. The way we're going to fix this with Android Studio, since Android Studio uses a power between 0 and uh, negative 1 and 1 for here, and negative 1 and 1 for here, is we're going to take this value up here, and we'll divide that by 100, divide this by 100, that way it's in the same scale as this guy is. And then down here, instead of clipping it off between negative 100 and 100, we'll clip it off between negative 1 and 1. Continue on to see the video that matches your programming language so that you can make your robot drive straight using the Modern Robotics Integrating Gyro. Okay, this shot took a little bit of shot and set up. So, I'd like to show you what I've got. A little helper here. So here we have the uh, canine robot, and the canine robot has on it a camera phone. Canine robot, camera phone. Camera phone is looking at a Spartan robot, which is driving behind it. Spartan robot has a program where if I bump it, it's going to keep driving straight. And it's just lined up initially, so we hope that the canine robot without a gyroscope is going straight, and that guy is going straight, and hopefully I line them both up to start with. This guy's got the camera on. And then, on the front of the canine robot, we have a range sensor. So as, as the Spartan gets closer to there, if I'm holding down a button on the gamepad, the... Let me set this up here. Ah, there we go. As I hold down a button on the gamepad, the 
uh, ro big robot is going to line up. So right now I'm holding down the button, so it's making sure it's 20 centimeters out. If I if I push this button, and then the gyroscope goes, I start driving towards it, and the big robot drives away. So then I can take this guy and I can push him, and he'll realign, and the canine robot keeps going at the same distance. While I've got you here, I want to stress one point, and that's that these programs that we put together don't always work for the first time. There's often stalling mistakes, or we had our motors going in the opposite direction, so I had to switch around some negative signs, or we forgot to put in some wait for one full hardware cycles, or we switched up our Arduino and our, our Android Studio programming, so try to tell an FTC motor to go at 15 power instead of 0.15 power. We make those mistakes. And you guys are going to too. Programs are a frustrating thing. Usually, you bang your head against the wall thinking, why doesn't this work? Why doesn't this work? Why doesn't this work? You may even have to sleep on it. You'll find the solution, the implant solution. Sometimes it works. Other times you're banging your head against the wall thinking, okay, why does it work now? It's a very frustrating but extremely learning process. Be sure to read through your code great thing to look for is always spelling mistakes. Make sure that all your variables line up as, as all being spelled exactly the same way. And then the next good step is explain your program to your friend. So you have a friend come over, a coach come over, even your mom, even if she doesn't know anything about programming or she's a rocket scientist. Either way, explain your program to her. Go through every step. Make sure she's asking all the silly questions that you think are not very intelligent questions. It'll make you think about what does each little part do? You can also go online and research on forums and such as to, hey, why is this happening? Last resort, you can send us an email and say, hey, Colton, we've got a request. We're trying to do this thing. How do we do it? But know that if you're having a frustrating programming experience, you're doing a lot of learning. I still think about what I was saying before. You're going to actually learn more not to say that all my work is going to waste, but you're going to actually learn more by taking yourself to the next level. So look at different programs that you just you did using the gyro and see, okay, what from there can you apply to the range sensor? What from there can you apply to the optical listen sensor? Or what can be the next step you can take with the engine grain gyro? Trying to figure out those problem solving things by yourself is going to be a lot more beneficial to you than actually going through these classes. And going through these classes is essential because you got to learn the basics. But it's like how in the classroom you listen to your teacher lecture and then afterwards you go work on your practice problems. Where you lecture is where you're learning those basic things and those practice problems is where you're ingraining it in your head, you're figuring out those decision making, you're, you're keeping those, those paths in your mind to get to those spots of what you're learning in the lecture even faster, you're exercising your knowledge. So go forth and challenge yourself.